I think in this moment, my co-host is Rebecca Hahn, and uh, I, I come to you live in a hilarious mood. And later on in the program, we're also going to bring Dakota back on, and we will be addressing um, the botanicals, the herbs that can help us uh, heal and, um, <clears throat> contaminants in our body, such as fluoride, which seems to be a main topic right now, along with several others that Dakota will uh, brilliantly inform us. But uh, I wanted to take the uh, initial part of the show with Rebecca to just kind of be here now in this moment. And I, I truly, I'm, I'm having hilarious relief today, thank goodness. But I had a, uh, a very deep sit this morning. And as you know, I like to ask <clears throat> hard questions and I like to keep going, you know, it's like, come on, what are we doing here? What's this existence all about, you know? And I recently watched, uh, maybe some of you have seen it. <clears throat> There's a YouTube going on. I think it's called The Web Golden Thread, it's something of that nature. And it's basically uh, based upon etymology and tells the whole story, etymo etymologically speaking. <laughs> and yes, I can create any words I want. <laughs> so, Except that she's just declared that soon she's going to stop speaking altogether and just communicate energetically. So she's got to oh, give up her addiction to creating words, too. Okay, so now you, now you blew the punchline. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. managing a lot here, you know. Yeah. I can't even touch you today, so just go on. Okay, so I'm going to go. All right. So Tracy just said hi. Who said, oh, hi. I, yeah, I need my, um, okay, I'll have to finagle that. I get a little, I get a little uh, dyslexic trying to do the chat room, and I'll let you take care of that. I'm doing it. Okay, so that's a reminder for our audience out there. Uh, we have, it's a call-in show. You can call in anytime, ask questions, uh, speak your heart, uh, join the conversation. And we also have a chat room. If you go to dearwoman.com and click on uh, watch live, I uh, scroll down and there's a chat room. So you're welcome in all these different aspects to join us. And of course, energetically, we're in this one together. Quantum field. Okay. All right. So back to my deep sit contemplation. You know, I've spoken to this before. I've written articles about how, as I sit with the exploration of who am I, much continues to fall away. And I'm speaking of the external world. Uh, you know, things that I might have enjoyed before, they don't, they don't jazz me anymore. And I call that <clears throat> falling away. And, and on the other side of that, what I want to share is that not only does it fall away, but my compassion for the planet, for humanity, deepens. And I think that's the shining star inside me that lets me know I'm on a path for myself that's in alignment. So again, I was asking, all right, who am I? You know, and uh, the past three days since I uh, <clears throat> viewed that documentary that I made mention of, these past three days, I have been floaty, whirly. My mind seems to be vacant. 
Uh, and a very unusual thing is I haven't had an appetite, which is really unusual for me. I like to eat. And, and for the longest time on this planet, I thought the only reason I was here was to eat. And so when my appetite goes, I know something seriously <laughs> mutating in me. And I was sitting in a beautiful place and I was looking out this big window, beautiful hill, trees, land, you know, uh, family of deer, everything just exquisite. And I've spoken about this before, probably way, way back. And in my earlier writings that I had to work really hard to connect with the earth. I didn't understand what people were talking about, you know, love your mother, be connected, da, 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 da. <laughs> I never could get that. And so I started working as a gardener, being a caretaker, really working with the earth. And I started to have more experience of the abundance that was there and, you know, and the magical moments. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'm deepening. <coughs> Something about my relationship to earth has never been quite right. Now, Many of you have probably been exposed to some of the um, sharings of Lily Earthling. And I thought, oh, cool, you know, and I started to pick up with what Lily was sharing and, you know, thinking Earth timeline and, you know, so that we aren't going into the astrals, artificial intelligence. You know, these were uh, good focuses to say, I do not consent to mind control manipulation management of my being right well this morning when i was sitting obviously i'm looking out upon the earth and i hear this isn't it either and, and believe me in that moment i was like oh really and i heard yes you let go of the earth too and i went okay so then now where am i and i came back to just essence or understanding of source. I was like, okay. When I went to that place, I was actually relieved. And I had a, just a brief conversation within myself. Well, you know, we have all these uh, ideas out there right now. Stay close to the earth timeline. Uh, stay close with humanity. We've got to save the species, the endangered species, including humanity. Uh, we can change the world. Uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I realized that is still an external mentalized concept that's driving the horses. Okay. And I really stepped back and went, holy shit. The theme of Get Lit <clears throat> for the past three months has been conscious dying and I come full circle right back to conscious death. And that's where it brought me. It was like coming back to source and let's say source, you know, is an understanding of we're back in the quantum field. We're not in any kind of material form. We are just energy. Okay. No uh, label put on that. No concept. We are now just back in the quantum field. That means you have to let go of everything. That means you have to die to everything. And remember, I've spoken to this before. I wrote an article not long ago, and it was, what if the spiritual purpose of humanity was to experience a collective death? Well, now I'm even saying, fuck the collective, experience death. And you know what? I'm coming full circle, full spiral back to that. Right now, my dedicated time is every moment is conscious death. And what that means is letting go of everything. All the information sharing that we've had up to date, that yes, that helped me sort my brain out. It helped me sort out the dynamic of the mechanism, okay? But when we die in our physical death, we leave the mechanism. Therefore, in conscious dying, we're gonna leave the mechanism. So if we're doing conscious death now, what came through me is all these ideas about life, about our spiritual journey, about this, about that. You know, who's got control of the planet? All of it. Let go of it. That every iota of the conversation 
is distracting us from preparing and examining and exploring our return to the quantum field for lack of a better words, okay? Return to our anagenic cells that are no longer enslaved. Now we don't know, I don't know what that means and it scares me at moments. I don't know what that means, but I do know death is the portal of conscious death. And whatever that means to lose everything, that's what the magnetic in me is, is calling. And it's like, it's not about an earth timeline. The earth and us, we're all in this one together. I am sure if, if the planet self-annihilates, <clears throat> is that not an indication to our own resonance? Should we not be self-annihilating? And I'm not suggesting suicide, but I think death has to come to everything. And, and so when she uh, pulled the punchline already, really, if my, you know, if I try to put my feelers out there on a sense of, well, then where, how do I evolve here and where am I going? It kind of seems like I'd probably stop talking, if you can believe that. I'd probably stop talking. Maybe not maybe not even eat any longer. And I'm not talking about suicide. I'm just saying when I allow myself to really disintegrate into nothingness, I think that's where our genuine safety, our genuine, I don't even know if you could use the word safety, but I think that's our origins. Okay, so that's, that's my experience up to now in a nutshell. And Rebecca, I know that you and I talked earlier and, and I know you're resonating, perhaps not using the same words, but resonating in life experience. I'm not using any words, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the one that chose to just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so that I could see what it looks like. <laughs> so just to get a sense of the bigger world here. Tracy, yeah. yes, I've been experiencing this in, in my own sort of different way, too. But hmm. Tracy wrote... Um, that we look gorgeous or something. Uh, okay. <laughs> that works. Uh, yeah, lovely. We look lovely today. But she said it's so freaky because I just recently was feeling like I just wanted to let go of all that was external. It gave me a sense of peace when I did it. Room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to chime in on this in a minute. And okay. I've had several conversations with people who have suggested that we should stop talking and just go telepathic. So funny. I've been practicing with Jerry. He's pretty good at reading me, LOL. So Jerry's her husband. And she's a regular call into and our hello, show. hello, Tracy and Jerry. I love you. So it's, yeah, it's interesting because I was speaking with Blue before the show began and um, about some things going on in my life and how I keep going more and more internal and keep having less external drive to accomplish things for the sake of you know, my spirituality or professionally, or it has to come, it's no, I can no longer fake myself out and say, you know, I'm doing this because of this external result or, you know, or this, see, I'm having trouble with words today. This idea of I'm going to do this to make this part of my life better, whether it's, you know, therapy, meditation, it's, it's become such a intrinsically motivated thing and this whole idea you know I was having a conversation with someone the other day about an energetic contract we have and I said we don't we don't have an energetic contract in this way anymore and I and, and this is someone who never uses this language or talks like this excuse me but they got it and I was like so something must be shifting if somebody who doesn't explore that arena talk in those terms even believe in it goes yeah I agree we're not energetically connected in this way anymore and we both agreed that it's time to just you know if we do work we have to do it purely for ourselves with nothing attached to any sort of outcome other than just being in the moment of doing the work quietly silently and it was interesting because Blue and I had this really brief conversation before we got on air about this idea of how we were attached to attachment or we were attached to non-attachment, like this whole idea of meditating and spiritually growing ourselves to, um, you know, to practice non-attachment, to not, and it's, like, but we were practicing it for that. And I've come to a place, like Tracy said, where 
everything is just falling away to the point where I'm not even practicing non-attachment. I'm not practicing anything other than being at the core essence of my quantum field, my being, whatever that may be. And this idea of, yes, being a breath Aryan, being telepathic. You know, I think evolutionarily we needed, as Blue said, to organize this mechanism. We needed this construct of practicing non-attachment. Here's the formula. Because we weren't ready yet for this really cosmic death. Mm -hmm. I think but evolution has stepped in, and we've seen these leaps happening. And I think another revelation, a layer peeled back on what is what, – you know, another layer peeled back on, gee, what's going on with this evolutionary thing? We've seen it in business. We've seen it in our relationships. We've seen it in how we process, you know, physics. What's another layer to this? And I think one of the other layers we're discovering is that um, we had to have that construct of attachment and non-attachment, that duality. And I think evolutionarily we've gotten to a place where we're just expanding so much that we're not we're not Morpheus anymore. Like we're not for, we're not anthropomorphic anymore. I don't even know and Morpheus that we don't need to actually attach ourselves to something, even if it's a construct, even if it's literal. So I've been having that experience too. Um, so okay, interesting. Okay, and what comes up for me this documentary that I watched, which was just so incredibly well done. And it's like, you know, when we have the concepts of, you know, don't feed the system, you know, don't feed, you know, uh, the energies that are harvesting, you know, these are things that are being tossed around. It's like, if you really go down the rabbit hole of not feeding, you not feed to your total annihilation. You not feed till it's there's nothing left. And if our planet, which it does appear to be, is totally, you know, on an agenda, has a mission, it's enslavement and all of that, it's like the most successful thing we've ever done on this planet politically mm -hmm. is when we boycott, when you starve the, the hungry one, and then they pay attention. Well, I don't even think it's about that anymore. But I do feel that us behaving as humans, trying to make sense of our lives still within this system is still feeding the construct. When we walk upon the land as sovereign beings and we allow ourselves to let go of everything, I think that's the freedom that we will not return here. We're not returnable because we're no longer feeding. And unfortunately, that goes to just everything in one's life. Now, if we look at the planet and we go, wait a minute now, the planet does feed our bioorganism like the animals, right? We can, we can have water, we can have food, we can have shelter, and we can have fire, right? But as soon as we take our energetic cells and put it back out into the system, we're feeding it. And maybe, and maybe what I just said isn't, isn't correct either. Maybe this human bioorganism, if it's been manipulated, as we have lots of theories now saying it has, well, then maybe feeding this organism is still feeding the system. And I'm trying not to go towards suicide because... There might be some truth in we no longer feed this organism and we consciously do take our lives, but with deep compassion. Okay, and that's a real difference. I don't recommend we not. Let me let me reframe before you go down this rabbit hole, because <clears throat> I think you're just you're spinning a little bit. I think what Blue is saying, and maybe she's not and she'll let me know, is is you know, keep if if we continue to do the work that we need to do, we as a quantum energy field are going to become so efficient that we no longer will need any part of the system. You know, people who are breatharians are so efficient that they can gain every mineral that they need from just the air around them. So to reframe, maybe, would be to, to if you just keep doing the work, keep getting more pure, keep 
unattaching yourself from any idea of attachment or non-attachment to the point where we're, we're such beaming vessels that we don't need any part of the system, whether it's their food, their money, and that as, as a human as we have known our vessel to be, yes, we have consciously died, but we haven't caused ourselves a painful, lacking, diminishing death. We've actually rose above this human form, and we're in, but yet we're still in it, functioning so that we can reach and commune with other people. But, you know, I mean, I think there is a point to what you were saying in terms of, yes, there is this experience of consciously dying and withering and doing all of that, and it may come to that, but I think... I, if I, if I understand you correctly in the language underneath the spiral that was happening, that it's more about really getting ourselves to a place where we're so empowered and pure and vibrating that we don't need the food, you know, that we, and then what happens to the system? If we don't even need their food mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or their language because we're telepathic, you know, or their mm -hmm. computers because we're telepathic. I mean, you are reaching out there today. Mm -hmm. But I think that's... Um, Part, yeah, and it's an a, element to what you're saying. I don't know if it's all of what you're saying, but I do think that's an element to what you were trying to say. Yeah, no, th I thought that was a good summary. That's a good summary. And, and the thing is, is as we come to this clarity within our being, you know, as we continue to ask, who are we? You know, there's lots of bumps and struggles and suffering. Uh, you know, we go through the scarcity, the loneliness, the aloneness, the, you know, all the emotional pains. But there is a way through. And I think that's what we, you know, we've seen a lot of sharing about. And there is some power. Uh, like, I have been very empowered by the knowledge of exactly how this planet functions. But there's a point when you finally get it, we don't need to know anymore. Because, you see, the, information's always, the information is, is still has the potential to snag you distract you, keep you enticed. It's like the next really cool Hollywood movie, all right? And so at some point, all of us who are awake and having these conversations, you need to fucking jump off. Jump off. And it might be you come on here and you go, bye, guys. Or our Facebook page becomes every day you just enter a thumbs up saying, I'm still off. I'm out. I'm in. I don't know. But I think that's going to be the real sign that we're taking the power in our hands when we just start saying, bye, guys. Because the information sharing is going to continue. It's going to still be a source of entertainment. And at some point, you got to go, it's like turn the TV off. Well, eventually, when are you going to turn the world off? When are you going to turn off? You don't have to figure it out anymore. Stop trying to figure it out. You know what's going on. Now get in. Uh, <laughs> oh my god so, yeah. <laughs> that's all I gotta say I am so nonverbal today this is just so I yeah it's been interesting because you are usually we're kind of on the same wavelength energetically and you are I'm looking at you going I she it's like, blah, 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 blah 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 and I have no response and it was it's hilarious because you're like I I think I'm going to go nonverbal for the rest of my life. And then she's like doing the exact opposite. And I'm just sitting here going, I, I, I have no response other than energetically. <laughs> well, that's how we work together. <laughs> yeah. I've had Tulsi tea and she said two cups of coffee. That might have something to do with it. But oh, God. So just would you shut the fuck up for a minute so I can have a thought and then get it out? Because my brain's moving slower today. <laughs> Okay, I think what happened was I, I'm house. I told you to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> she can't help herself. Say what you're gonna say, then be quiet. <laughs> you're still talking with your hands. Just stop. I'm practicing telepathy. You don't need your hands for telepathy. <laughs> if it's purely telepathic. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> You idiot! <laughs> Go back over your books. <laughs> that's not telepathy. That's sign language. <laughs> Blue is really being the sacred clown today, and 
I we're you know, and I'm just in this really grounded place. It's super wain, rainy and windy out, and and I've been really in this realm of deep meditations and um, some neuro brain stuff that I've been working on. And I came to the show just like. And she comes in, I was like, wow, okay, how am I going to negotiate this one? But, <laughs> but I don't have a whole lot to say today. Like, I'm just kind of like in this really grounded, you know, what Tracy was talking about, that being telepathic and letting everything external go. And I find it really interesting because you keep talking about letting all the external go, but you, you are so enlivened right now by our external environment. That's not a criticism. I'm just making observation. And I'm in this place where I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not tethering to anything. So it's this really interesting thing. Like you're speaking to the internal. I'm just being the internal. And I'm really, it's such a relief to be this grounded. It's such a relief to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look at my life and go, Oh, I was doing all that work because it was this little nodule of extrinsically motivated uh, results that I wanted, whether it was my improved partnership or improved business or things with my daughter. or And it was like, I got to let go of all of that stuff. If I do any of my work based on even just a tiny iota of some result that I'm expecting – the work's not going to happen because then it's not about this quantum field. It's about out here. And and it goes back to kind of what we said about evolution. It's like I don't know if we were as vessels ready to completely let go of. Like we had a very, you know, formalized construct, you know, the last century around things, you know, even looking at Freud and how he, he has to interpret everything. And then we moved into like, you know, Buddhist and meditation and transcendental and how this attachment and non-attachment theory came around. So if we're, if we're striving towards non-attachment, we're still attaching ourselves to something. Yeah. <laughs> Just recently, you know, this is the past week for me yeah. where I've gone, wow, it is, it is, it is so quiet in here now. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, I can hear the, I can hear the wind moving. I can hear. So there's so much space in this vessel now because I'm not taking things and going. Okay, this inside piece is now attached to this outside piece, even on the most subtle level. Because I had gotten pretty good at you know not attaching myself. I catch myself. And so we come into the show today, and you're like you know this sacred clown on cocaine, and I'm just like. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm just, okay. But it's a really different feeling to drop the anxiety, drop the the idea of always having to have some agenda, even if it's a very spiritual, pure agenda mm -hmm. around the work that I'm doing. And it's the shouldas, you know, like with, you know, even with meditation, I remember being a, a, a shooting on myself all the time. And it's like, it's not about that. It get to a place where there's so much spaciousness inside of you that you can just move within yourself at any given moment. And I don't know if this will stick. You know, it could be something related to something bigger, and we're going to shift out of it. But it just it feels like – so it's good I have so much space in this because you are just, like, shoving yourself yeah. <laughs> with all this stuff, and it's great. I mean – I had a, I had a conversation with Dakota earlier before the show, and, and really um, – you know, I think what I'm trying to demonstrate is like I came on the show saying I'm I'm filled with hilariousness at the because there is such a release, mm -hmm. a relief. OK, once again, and where it takes me is my infinite expansion, you know, and, and in my infinite expansion, that's where my laughter can come from. I mean, that's why laughter. I mean, it's just like, oh, my gosh, you can laugh at anything. It releases. Yeah the whole attachment mm -hmm. and you know I have to look at the tiny details it's like yeah. I have done this too but it's like we have to stop those of us who are awake now I'm not saying everyone's ready to do this okay? no. but I think those of us who are awake and are still spinning our wheels on trying to get the facts and understand the theories of why the planet is the way it is I think those of us that are in that place there's got to be a point where you say, I don't need to do this any longer either. Because yeah. if you've got some wild theory in your, in your being that says, but I've got to save humanity, you're attached. 
<laughs> if you've got something in you that says, this is my purpose, this is my purpose, you're attached. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd say the most healthy thing that's going on in our social network right now is fuck it from a compassionate place. It's time to say, fuck it. Exit. Go in. And we all know this. You're the value. Well, then if you're the value, why aren't you in your value? A hundred percent. Why aren't you in here? What? Because you've got children? Maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, clarify that. What do you mean by value? And then what do you mean by, like, how are you making the children the metaphor in that? Okay. Uh, we're the origin. We're the source. We're all the value. It has nothing to do with out there. Okay. Now, I don't know how this works for parents and children, but... You can still, and I think you can still deeply love each other. But those children on the outside, that's not it. If you're cultivating your child to do this, to, to understand the consciousness that we're sharing right now, okay, that perhaps is the responsibility, the exchange you have with that consciousness. But I, I am saying... Everything goes on the table. Your children, your lovers, mm -hmm. animals. Everything has to go on the table. Yeah. None of it can be a reason why I still have to participate in the external because how will I feed my children? Yeah. Okay, so Tracy wrote, <clears throat> and I like this. I think we're going to start using this as a phrase. <clears throat> First of all, she says she's laughing her ass off. <laughs> yeah, this is a laughing Seven minutes ago, she was laughing her ass off. Um, <laughs> she said, I think maybe there's a stripping away of all, of all in order to then clearly choose a path that is consciously happier, one that feels, feeds our inner child, awake and aware and imbalance. And I do, I think that's happening. And I think, you know, up until, and who knows, this is just what I'm hearing from all of you around in blue that it was about a lot of suffering to clear. I think we were really getting into the gunk and the depth of, and the density. We talked so much about density. And um, even if you look at our, our shows from previously, we were talking about really heavy shit, you know. And, and I think that was people clearing their own density. Mm -hmm. And I think now we're in a place where we're going, okay, I'm emptied. A lot of that is gone now. So where is my more authentic path? But instead of reaching for it, we're just being in ourselves and, and having greater faith that it will come. And um, she says she feels tons of relief in the moment, letting go of should haves. And it's interesting because, you know, again, if we look at evolution and what's happening, I think we hit a layer of should haves where people were like, I'm going to become a yogi and I'm going to meditate and do this and I'm going to do things more for myself. And it was this selfish paradigm of, um, taking care of yourself first, right? And then taking care of others because if mama ain't good, ain't nobody good. <clears throat> so we, but I think within that, we were, we created this construct of, well, I should be doing this for myself, but I'm not. And now I think, you know, according to even what Tracy says, is tons of relief around the should haves. And, and now I'm just like, again, fuck it, which is exactly what you said. And then she said, I agree, everyone has to hit their fuck it moment to choose another way that's better for them. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've hit the evolutionary fuck it. Yeah, there you Fine. go. We're at the critical mass of fuck it. Yeah, I think we are. And, and not in this angsty, well, fuck it, but what's next? Or, oh, my God, this is so angsty and horrible and everything's falling apart. We're just like, fuck it. It's just not serving me anymore. And I want spaciousness. And so right. here I am. Right. Here I am. And, and I think that, okay, one of the um, myst mystifications of, you know, okay, I say, fuck it. Now I want for, you know, I want what I want. It's like, I think what I'm asking is that has to be examined as well. I don't think it's this planet. I don't think it's humanity, the way we're interacting. I think it's fuck it, go inside, find mm. expansion, figure out where's your portal and get the hell back to your origins. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, stop thinking we're going to make it better here. And I'm, yeah. and again, 
I'm being very compassionate. Yeah. It's like, but stop thinking we're going to save this dying planet and whatever else is going on here. Love it to death. Right. And the only way we're actually going to make anything better, or who gives a shit if we do or not, really, right. is right. if we completely let go of everything. Of everything. Go into the spaciousness inside of ourselves and just be in the – that's where the quantum field is resonating. And, and if everybody goes inside and resonates in that way, then – who knows what things will look like? Yeah. They'll look different. They probably will feel better. But mm -hmm. that's not the point of doing it. The point of doing it is just just because that's where I feel my most spacious. Mm -hmm. And I feel my best right now. And if we continue to do that, then right. and we so, might not even have a planet left. But that might be a good thing. We can't judge yeah. what's going to happen. Exactly. Get to that place where, all right, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, get over this. Maybe this isn't our yeah. planet. Maybe all of it's bullshit. Who cares? Go back to the quantum field if that's what we know. Do overs. You know? <laughs> do over. I would like to go back to 1932 when that one thing happened. Okay, pluck, and I'm going to do that one over again, and let's start over. Or, yeah. Or even, you know, like there's a quantum field, right? So it's like this bubble of stuff up above, and then there's another layer of it, which is like the same sort of bubble or timeline, but it's like it, one of the parallel universes. So not only can we jump into different places to gain access and information to change stuff, but we can also go 1952, parallel universe, one, two, three, oh, I want to go to four, and mm -hmm. then I'll insert that. You know, like, because we are at a place where this spaciousness and relief that we're feeling is what mm -hmm. is it's indicative of the fact that we are tapping into a different energy source. And this whole thing where we talk about manifestation and we can create something instantly, we talk a lot about it, but I'm not sure how many people actually do that. If we're not, you know, we'd like to do that. We're practicing toward that. But I think, I think the spaciousness, and this is what's like, I think we're going to get to that point. Okay. And what that brings up and pretty soon here, I want to bring Dakota in. Uh, mm -hmm. I think too, you know, I get as fat, I have been as fascinated as anyone, as the best of us in uh, parallel universes, simultaneous realities, you know, um, <clears throat> life on other planets. And I'm going to say that my conclusion at this point is stop looking there. Who mm -hmm. cares? It's, it's, it's all it is is acquiring more information. If you already know you're in that 3 to 15%, you're fucking awake already, stop the research in the external universes. Get over that. That's the hook. Well, and that's what I mean about it being instantaneous now, is it's not any longer, you know, we don't have to search mm -hmm. the quantum field for anymore. We just have to sit in our own spaciousness, and it's there. Exactly. And yeah. it's like everybody has, we share it uh, conceptually. Mm -hmm. We have all the data. We're the living library. Everything, we're the universe is within us. Well, then why aren't we practicing that? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and really meditate and ponder on that. Why don't you ask and answer every question inside yourself? When are you going to realize every iota of information out there is irrelevant? When are you going to say, fuck it and get off the ship? Today's broadcast is being brought by the Church of Blue. <laughs> Amen, sister. <laughs> she is on it. She's on it. All right. Now, coming back to, and this is where the compassion itself is, all right? I'm here, I'm existing with what is, all right? But I have a deep compassion for humanity, all right? I mean, it still affects me. And so we're going to bring Dakota on. Dakota, you could start to um, <clears throat> link into the show so you can get your window. Um, today, we have Dakota with us once again, who has identified the botanicals, the herbs on the planet that can heal the human bioorganism. Okay, so what we're talking about here is not you. There's a bioorganism that we're caring. There's a bioorganism waiting for us. <laughs> There's a bioorganism. Spaciousness, we will have a bioorganism. The whole <laughs> universe will so, come together, no pun intended. 
Right. Instead of saying, okay, so this is the point, this is the climax. <laughs> okay. But because we are, we have an awareness, a consciousness of a bioorganism, a bioorgasm that we happen to be a caregiver of, all right? then we are willing to acknowledge there are botanicals, there are herbs, there are healing plants on this planet that help the bioorganism, okay? So we're gonna invite Dakota who has a wealth of knowledge and continuing love wisdom around the things that can assist us. But first, uh, Dakota, when you come on board, I'm gonna welcome you to um, respond to the conversation and, okay. and just pick up with us. But so it's now, not on. It won't launch? All right, hit it again. Hit launch again. Any time. Okay, then go ahead and open up the Zoom room. It may be it wants that. Uh, find your Zoom app. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, open up your Zoom, yeah. It may not be responding the same way. Uh, yes, and Biggie, uh, Dakota's going to come in. I sent you a Skype message. I couldn't get my Gmail to communicate with you. Uh, you know, I don't even have my chat open. He could be talking to me. Let's see. Yeah, I know. Laugh out loud. Okay, there he is. Yay. Okay, so I like to call these moments crystal rainbow. No, forget it. Fuck that. <laughs> I don't want it. We'd be, we'd be here now. I am just... I my audio. Okay, I'm so just now. in amazement today. I can't even keep up. Yeah, joined by computer. Let's see if that Biggie does. loves us. We love you too, Biggie. Text. Yeah, I really don't have a whole lot to say about right. what's happening Join today. Join I'm just here. Turn your microphone off. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, she should be coming in now. Biggie, fire her. She's out of control. Do I want my audio on? Okay, I'm going to mute. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have a whole, I don't know what is happening over there today. Um, She's in rare form. But I, I have to say that there's some sort of um discrepancy for me personally on, you know, we're having all this conversation about um uh, working from inner source. <laughs> yeah, Blue's manic today. Um, Biggie's reporting to us. Um, so there, there's this idea of tapping into inner source for everything. We just got through talking about being breath Aryans and um, living off of source alone. And, and now we're bringing in this idea of herbs to help nurture this vessel that we live in. And so for me, there's a bit of a discrepancy in that content. H however, to fix this discrepancy for myself, I feel like um, we've been talking a lot about compassion. And I think this idea of compassion comes into this, this bio -orga organism, you've cursed me, that, that if we take in the energy of other things, such as plant life and herbs, that is nonviolent, non-aggressive by nature, then that only will increase our ability to have compassion for ourselves and others. Um, and until we actually can live as a vessel completely autonomous of everything you know food air everything then and then we need this so it's a really great stepping stone but that was just sort of a discrepancy in my mind I'm like well so to bridge that gap it is a bridge i mean it's a bridge in the sense of we are putting out ways to which we can get our vessel to a place of being totally autonomous and taking on the um the energetics of herbs and plants and flowers in a way that we need their assistance in becoming more compassionate and empathic and intuitive. And so that's where I bridged the gap in my own discrepancy of thinking between, well, let's just fuck it and be breatharians to, oh, now we're taking herbs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we need that. So, yeah, so that was just why I was speaking to that discrepancy in my own, like, well, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. So, you were saying, okay, fuck it. Now, okay, now let's talk about herbs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm using my rational brain. I was hoping you guys would figure out a way to transition over to this. <laughs> I just did it. Go for it. Okay. Um, we're good. We're good. All right. Well, how do I move this thing? Well, I guess my question is. Um, whole window. Because we don't have you on share screen today. I know, but I want to see my screen. Oh. My question. Question for you, Dakota, would be, what are we covering today and how does it relate to this idea of 
um, increasing our own energetic autonomy? Like, are there herbs and things we can take to make this biosphere more energetically sensitive? So, like, last week we talked a lot about radiation. So we had to go down last week, and almost the whole show we talked about how to cleanse ourselves of toxic radi radiance, radiation, and um, things that we can do to protect ourselves from environmental <clears throat> barragement of toxins and chemicals and things like that. We're really flipping it. I mean, my curiosity today, and I don't know if this is where you're going, but considering the content of what we're experiencing energetically and what the content of our conversation has been, I'm wondering if there are herbs that you can take to become more <clears throat> energetically pure, more telepathic, more autonomous, more clear. Like we're talking a lot about this relief that we're feeling and this spaciousness and this idea of being more internal. And I, that might not be the content, but maybe if it's not today, we can touch on it another week. But that to me is what I'm curious about. Yeah. Uh, I think probably the theme is how to remove some of the substances that shut us down. For mm -hmm. example, okay. uh, fluoride collects in the, uh, the pineal gland. Yeah. And the pineal is the master gland in the body, of course, but it is also associated with consciousness. And um, a lot of work is, has gone into looking at the pineal gland as um, having a, a kind of a quantum field effect. So uh, here we've been talking a lot about water recently. This has been, we've had a water festival and we're looking at the introduction of fluoride into the water here. So since that's been uh, one of the, the uh, focal points of conversations in this area, it ties in with what you guys are talking about a lot because there are certain chemicals that shut us down biologically and and because we are in uh, this body, we do need to be filtering. We are filtering. Our senses are set up for filtering through the body to perceive we, the way we perceive the, the world is filtered a great deal by what's going on with us physically. And um, so to, I'd like to talk about fluoride. First of all, um, most of the country, unfortunately, has fluoride in the water. And I'm going to assume that, that most folks know that it's uh, a toxin. And uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of the specifics about how to deal with it. Uh, it's a byproduct of the fertilizer industry. And there's, there are different types of fluoride that are put in the water. Um, so we're, we're talking about sodium fluoride, of course. Calcium fluoride is natural. The sodium fluoride is quite toxic. And um, there are some types of uh, fluoride like um, uh, hydrofluorosilic silicilic acid, which comes from the chemistry industry. Um, and uh, it contains a lot of arsenic and lead and cadmium. So when we have fluoride put in the water, we're not just getting the fluoride itself, but we're getting quite a bit of arsenic too. And as I said, ca uh, cadmium and lead. And one of the things that these forms of fluoride do is when, it, when they go through lead pipes, for example, in water systems, uh, some of the older homes use uh, uh, metal pipes that had lead in them and they leached the lead out into the water supply and that's one way that a lot of kids are getting o overdosed on lead. And um, the other thing that's uh, unfortunate about fluoride is that it's um, it's a halide like uh, um, uh, iodine and uh, uh, bromine or bromide, those are different forms of them. And it mimics iodine in the body. So everywhere that there's supposed to be iodine, there can be fluorine or fluoride. And um, we need iodine in every tissue of the body. Every cell has iodine in it. We talk so, about iodine with, uh, in terms of radiation, mm -hmm. actually, but uh, it turns out that iodine also can be helpful in removing fluoride from our bodies. And of course, uh, we like to 
um, avoid drinking it with our Royal Berkey's and the special filter to get the fluoride out of the water. Regular water filter systems won't take it out because it's really small. So you, we have to have a special water, water uh, filtration system for it. But they were talking about reverse osmosis. Is that sufficient to do that? Because I just, that's the other thing is. Mm, I, um, my understanding is that it that's questionable. Mm -hmm. um, so I I would just I would go more. I, I'd really look at the filtration system. I think the only one I found that I trust is um, the fluoride filter for the Berkey. Berkey, B E R K E. Uh, no, yeah, there's a Y. B E R K Y is that. And then also, um, I've heard a lot about bone char systems. Um, I don't, I don't know about cake. Are you talking about charcoal made out of bones? Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. I can't answer that. I did a bunch of research recently because the uh, the area I'm living in has fluoride in the water, and so um, I was looking into all of that. <clears throat> no charcoal isn't is not adequate. Or no, this is uh, bone char. It's different than just charcoal. It's a specific kind. So yeah. that's worth looking and into, I too. I wanted to clarify, too. Like, So what you said about the iodine is our body needs iodine, but the fluoride is kind of mimicking it. Mm -hmm. So then the body, what, stops producing? No, the body absorbs fluoride instead of iodine. Ah, okay. Okay. And the same goes for bromine. Bromide. 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 The, the chlorine and fluoride, bromine and bromide, you know, those are just slightly different versions of the same thing. And, okay. And um, so we, uh, I don't remember how much we talked about last week with this, but what I want to get to is that the, I, if you, this is another reason to be taking iodine. Okay. Is because it will cause the body to dump the fluoride out of it. And it can do so pretty quickly. Um, uh, I know with, there was a study done with nascent iodine and they found that just after one dose, there was a 78% uh, increase of the uh, release of, in, into the urine of fluoride. Whoa. So what'd you call that, NASA? Nascent iodine. Nascent iodine, I prefer that over Lugol's, mostly because it's um, more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. It's an atomic form, and it's it's it had an electrical charge applied to it that uh, makes it. And and when the body um, is actually using iodine, the body puts an electrical charge into the iodine. So um, that's a process that has to happen. The body has to do that to Lugol's, for example, mm -hmm. to make it uh, usable. How are you but, spelling that too, Dakota? What? Nascent? No, N-A-S-C-E-N-T. So uh, nascent already has the charge that the cells need. And um, so you don't need that much of it. You don't need as much as you do of Lugol's. And, and so it's safer. You, you tend not to get toxicity. Toxicity, which I was looking for my book, The Iodine Crisis, on my shelf, and I can't find it. I was going to, that's weird. I just had it out the other day. Well, uh, and also I want to ask, I mean, because I feel like I'm asking you questions like how it would serve the people who are listening. Where would we get nascent, and is there a recommended brand? Um, they're all, uh, the nascent. Iodine are there aren't very many of them out there, and there isn't. And so whichever mm. one you get, uh, I only know actually of two brands, um, and so both of those would be good. And um, what was I going to say about that? Uh, uh, Blue is asking where you can get it, and I know that um, a couple of sites that um, like Gabriel Cousins Raw Foods site has a shop, and he sells. A couple of different types of really high end nascent and lugals. Um, did you ever, Becca? Did you ever try to get it from our local health food store? You can't. You can't find it. Yeah. You have to order it. It's it's not easy to come by. I mean, once you find the resources, but um, Gabriel Cousins site, there's a really good one. And 
Oh, go ahead. Uh, Dakota's going to respond here. Um, there's a type of nascent um, called uh, detoxidine uh, that's sold through uh, globalhealingcenter.com. And um, that's a good one, too. So I think uh, uh, the iodine is important, but one of the things it's good to know is that it works in synergy with selenium. Mm. Uh, a lot of these things work in synergy. That's why we always prefer to get them from our food if we can. But mm -hmm. in the case of iodine, it's hard to do. Um, but it works with selenium and an easy food source of for selenium are Brazil nuts. Hmm. Uh, and it only takes one Brazil nut a day, but you soak the Brazil nut overnight in water. And then the next day, um, you can eat the nut and drink the water. And that's a, a day's dose of selenium. And the reason why Brazil nuts are so high is that the tree cannot grow unless there's plenty of selenium in the soil. Nice. Okay. So yeah. you wouldn't, uh, you'd recommend the Brazilian nuts, not a Brazilian. selenium uh, supplement. You could take a selenium supplement, but I always prefer food sources whenever yeah. possible, okay. just because there are always complements and synergistic elements that are related to whatever you're wanting to take. Mm -hmm. And um, when you just take a selenium supplement, you, you know, not just, so we don't know what's in the matrix, it's really the, the chemistry is very complex in plants and mm -hmm. there's just nothing that exists alone in a plant it's always in a matrix of other things that work with it um go ahead so i was just going to point out this book and i apologize in advance dakota if you don't agree with this book but this is the book i've been talking about the iodine crisis and whether you follow the protocol or not <laughs> in the book it has so much information that speaks to exactly all the stuff that Dakota is speaking to. So it would be a great supplement if you um, get on and do her courses to have this handy as well, because I, I got so much information. It just opened my eyes also to the history mm -hmm. of how we're in an iodine crisis and to the history of how it's been taken out of our foods and bromide has been put in, mm -hmm. specifically along those same lines as fluoride to sort of dumb us down and keep us just diseased enough so there's some really interesting history about just how we change the way we process our own foods, which has led to like a 75% increase in a decade of breast cancer yeah. just by taking iodine out of our foods and putting bromide in. And I think, what the hell, like, what were they even thinking? And to me, not that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but there's something behind this stuff. There's something behind all of this. So the history is really cool just about if, you, if you're into food and history and health. But then it goes into exactly all of the reasons why if you take iodine, how you have to take certain ones with certain things because otherwise you're going to dump bromide and make it worse for yourself. And it's just a really accessible resource that would complement some of the coursework that I think we have at the, um, on the site. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. I haven't read that book. So that'd be, a, a, it's a cool. Pick up. Um, bring it, uh, bring it home when I you was, want. I will. I was thinking I'll bring it home with me and we can shop through it. Okay. Um, so, um, I want to talk about some of the things that help with fluoride besides iodine. Okay. Um, there's, uh, of course, we, we mentioned selenium already. Um, pycnogenol is really good to help remove fluorine. And pycnogenol, P-Y-C-N-O-G-E-N-O-L comes from a pine tree and um, it's a, of course this is a concentrated supplement mm -hmm. that you can buy and it's good for a lot of things but um, for folks who don't have the money to buy pycnogenol um, it comes they prefer to take it out of the uh, scotch pine because there's a higher concentration but in all of the pines there is pycnogenol. So if uh, I'm a big advocate of drinking pine needle tea, and we talked about that a little mm -hmm. bit last week too, and, um, but you'll get some pycnogenol and other related uh, antioxidants from the uh, pine tea, and it's 
it's free. Just make sure it's not polluted. Um, watch, be careful where you're getting it from. And um, uh, there is, uh, you can be helped by getting fulvic acid and humic acid that grabs onto a wide range of heavy metals and takes them out. You said There's folic and what? Fulvic, F-U-L-V-I-C, and humic acid. And in herbalism, uh, the place that we tend to look for those two things, they, they're in soil, they're, they come from soil. Um, and there's a whole new field now of looking at how soil itself can uh, heal disease. Um, some people are even fermenting soil, but we're not going to go there right now. Um, the fulvic and humic acid can be found in something that's sold, it, and you might be familiar with it, the um, Ayurvedic compound called shilajit. Shilajit is an ancient earth that has been used for a long time that, uh, you probably want me to spell that too. Yes, huh? please. Um, let's see, it's S H. I L A J I T. And um, it is a wonderful mineral source. Um, and it contains a, a good amount of fulvic and humic acid. It's also mined in uh, South America. Uh, and then, you know, if you want to buy it as a um, um, supplement, you can find it online or in a health food store. Okay, so uh, then there's something else and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna talk about some of the uh, actual compounds that have been researched to counteract fluoride toxicity and what plants you can find them in. So there's something called caffeic acid. Now, by the way, I should say all of this information is in a resource for students in the school called uh, Plant Families and Their Therapeutics. Oh, good. So, um, caffeic acid is in olive oil. Here's where you start uh, organizing your diet again for a detox diet. Mm -hmm. Good quality, extra virgin, fresh olive oil. Research it and find a good brand. Um, you can find it in burdock. It's in apples. It's in coffee. Yay! Artichoke leaves. Basil. Barley. Uh, oregano. And some other plants. We don't need to go through all of them. Okay. So if by including those, the, you, that's helping you. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, rutin, which is a bioflavonoid, that helps. So those are the, and calcium also helps, and, but you want to get that from your food. So those are things that help you uh, with the fluoride, but iodine is really there. So um, since the fluoride is contributing arsenic, the, the fluoride that they're adding is contributing arsenic, we should talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. um, there are regulations that limit the amount of arsenic in the water. They supposedly test it um, and make sure it's not over a certain amount. Um, but, and this is one of the things folks should know that have wells, is that uh, there's arsenic naturally in bedrock that leaches out into water supplies. And some, depending on you know the strata, wherever a well is, there can be higher arsenic levels in well water. Mm -hmm. And it um, might be good to find out if that's you or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, it's in some foods. Oh, oh I want to go back to fluoride for a second. Just a reminder that even if we're being careful with filtering our water and everything, um, if we go out to eat, we're getting probably fluoride in the whatever was cooked. If you drink a beer, it's in the beer, and it's in the wine. So. Um, Anyway, back to arsenic. Uh, the best thing I know of to counteract arsenic in the body is moringa. Oh, yeah. Is what? Moringa. Yeah. 
M O R I N G A. Yeah, we were growing. Uh, we, in fact, we planted something like 500 moringa seeds when I was at the bee sanctuary in Hawaii. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly, um, there over many hundreds and hundreds of years people can adapt to high levels of arsenic. Mm -hmm. There's a, a tribe in the mountains of, I think it's Peru, uh, where the arsenic levels are incredibly high. It would kill people almost right away. But um, over, you know, I don't know how long they've been there, but uh, they have adapted to it. And so that's a good sign. We might adapt to it, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. but. But it was slowly increased, I imagine. Okay, so how about, uh, uh, let me just ask you a question. Uh, of all of the toxins that are in our bodies, you know, the chemical toxins, that sort of thing, which one do you think accounts for the highest level in the body? What's the one that where if we were tested, we would have the most of. Mm. And in general, through the population. Like a toxin, like a bromide or, or a... Yeah, a mm -hmm. cadmium or any of those toxins. Yeah, okay. When the EP, I'll just say this, the EPA did ran tests to find out the levels of various toxins in the human body. Mm -hmm. And there's one that came out at the very top, like, 10,000 times higher than any any of the other toxins. What do you think it might be? Okay, my guess would be iron. Okay. I would say something obscure like cadmium. Okay. Um, it turned out to be plasticizers. Uh, it turned out to be what? Plasticizers, <gasps> phthalates. That makes complete sense. Yeah. I just saw a video recently about what, what they're calling microplastics. Mm -hmm. The waters, there's a team that's been testing the ocean, streams, all these waterways, because the uh, plastics break down into these tiny, tiny microparticles yep. that are being consumed by all the animals and moving up the food chain. Wow. I know. And we can't that, escape it. It's, it's terrifying on some level. We absolutely cannot escape. The fucking rabbit hole, the demise we've set ourselves up in with petroleum products and phthalates and plastics and estrogen disruptors, and we can't get away from it. And people don't understand what a fucking food crisis we're in, that even the wild-caught salmon that you pay $25 a pound for at Whole Foods is fucking plastic on a cellular level. And it, I'm sorry to go off, but it's one of those things where we... How do we adapt to the onslaught of all the intensity that's coming out? We can't adapt quick enough. And yeah. this idea of plastics, and I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all that you said that was like off the charts in our system. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I feel like how, what could we possibly do? I mean, how much fucking moringa can I take, you know, or iodine can I take? You know, I may as well just like. How do you how do you battle that? Because it's just getting worse, and it is on a cellular level. Like genetically, our fish are becoming genetically linked to phthalates, to plastics. They are now, morphing what, into these what things. Thing you do is you don't eat animals anymore. Mm -hmm. But but it doesn't help the animals. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I mean, I'm uh, my body. I mean, when I was doing raw foods, vegan stuff, I weighed like ninety pounds. My menses stopped. I am the type of person that. Not often, but does need that injection of animal. And I bless the food and I do all of that. But, you know, a lot of people aren't going to function at that level. So like, what do you do to balance that? But, you know, uh, first of all, I would say that raw isn't necessarily the answer. Well, I don't think so either. I mean, even when I was just a, a plain vegan that wasn't raw, yeah, I was still bloated all the time and weighed 95 pounds. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, obviously I'm older and things have changed and, you know, and I do believe I do raw in the summer mostly just because naturally that's my affinity and that's cool. That's where I go. But I do a lot of warm oils in the winter, a lot of, you know, blanched vegetables and things like that. But I do need that injection of animal fat and fish sometimes for me personally. I, I, mm -hmm. My body needs it. And I do believe that some people can get so pure 
that they can just live like that. But I also think genetically some of us, based on your blood type or what's going on in your life, and that you need a little bit of that animal and to bless yourself with it. So how? And then there's people, of course, that are never going to pass that up and, and eat like their blood type, you know, killing something, mm -hmm. eating it once, and then two months later you kill again and you eat another thing. And in between you forage and eat your veggies and your berries. Yeah. That's what I think you know, certain blood types need to do. Others can be vegan. Others can eat grains with that. But what, you know, so many people aren't even conditioned to even be close to that and will never. So what can they do to counteract the enormity of that kind of toxin in our system when it's genetically altering our fish? You know, how do you, how do you even get around that? Well, you know, that's two topics. One of them, of course, is about diet that whether to consume the animal products or right not. and um, but and then the other is uh, even if you are vegetarian or vegan we're getting these phthalates from other sources for example yeah. uh, all of the wiring in our homes is covered in plastic and as they heat up they off gas and we breathe it in same with our carpets our, our computer screens yeah. I mean Everything is coated in plastic these days. Right. Every new item that you buy for your home, mm -hmm. off gas is plastics for like intensely for yeah. like five years. And if you have little children that crawl on the floor and touch things, you're just stopping. You're just creating, wreaking havoc in their hormones. Just right. like that. So I want to just mention a few of the things that they that result chemically in the body from the intake of these these phthalates. Um, First of all, they interfere with the chemistry of our fatty acids, mm -hmm. especially DHA. And the DHA is needed to make uh, the cell linings of all of all of the membranes covering our cells. And um, uh, the DHA is also necessary for the functioning of our brain cells, especially in memory. Um, another thing mm -hmm. is that um, they can create a zinc deficiency. Mm -hmm. And if they create a zinc deficiency, well, you need zinc to be properly metabolize vitamin A and, and B6. And so you might think that you're not getting enough A or B6 because you're getting those symptoms, but it could be that you're zinc deficient because of phthalates. So, right. you know, this gets so, so crazy. Um, the other thing I want to point out, too, is that, you know, there's this myth that buying organic foods from companies with integrity, I did some research once, maybe it was my mom that did it, but um, there's only one company out there where you can buy a product in a can that isn't lined with plastic, and I think yeah. even Eden... Eden Soy, whatever that company is, I've stopped buying their stuff because their products are lined. Their canned goods are lined with plastic. Every company does it now except for one or two on the market. It's so hard to get away from it. So you only buy stuff in glass jars. Yeah. Or uh, bulk bins, you know, is a little safer yeah. depending on how it's been transported. But You're right. So I'm going through this just so, to help people realize why they might want to shop this way. Yeah. Um, so an, another thing that it does um, is it damages the pancreas. And we've got a huge uptick in diabetes now. It's considered an, an epidemic. How much of that is related to the damage to the pancreas from these plasticizers? Um, and they damage hormone function, especially thyroid. We keep getting back to thyroid. And that's another epidemic is thyroid dysfunction. Um, they also damage testosterone and um, they interfere with the metabolism of cholesterol. So a lot of the high cholesterol problems that people have where it seems like no matter what they do with their diet, blah, 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 they're taking this and that, cholesterol is still high, could be plasticized. Um, so anyway, as far as what to do about it, you know, the first thing is a is avoiding them as much as we can, which is pretty hard. Yeah. They're finding plasticizers all over the world in the most remote regions yeah. of the world. Uh, in the animals, they're finding plasticizers. So, and those animals are on a natural diet, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, 
the there is there are a couple a few things that you can do uh the far infrared sauna seems to help what's that? the far infrared sauna seems to help and um eating a lot of those cruciferous vegetables helps keep the liver functional to do it, it keeps the detoxification pathways functioning so they don't get too overloaded and you have a chance of just eliminating them through the liver so the cruciferous vegetables are things like the broccoli the kale um brussels sprouts cabbage and um, in general those vegetables seem to help detox a lot of these uh, pollutants that we're dealing with so uh you know if you could eat some cruciferous vegetables every day that would be great um and then uh calcium d glucarate i'll spell that g l u c a r a t e i don't have the dose for it with me but you take that twice a day and that helps and that's pretty much all i know about how to um, deal with those um, so is that you have a favorite toxin you'd like to talk about well i have a question i mean and this might not need to be answered now but you know, one of the things that happens to me is I get overwhelmed. I'm someone who spent, I mean, in fourth grade, I won the state science fair for a project on Western medicine versus herbology. So I've spent my life researching. It's part of my geekiness. And I even get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think a lot of people just shut down. And, you know, and you don't have to answer this now, but think about it. If you could do like three go-to herbs for everything that we're battling in our systems, mm -hmm. in our, you know, in our environment today, what would be the, you know, one to five or one to three herbs or minerals or supplements that you would say, these are, these, these three together with a balanced diet are the most powerful things you could probably do. I mean, that question might be impossible to answer because we're all such unique, we're struggling with unique things, but. We are, but, but that's one of the things, one of the reasons why adaptogens are yeah they highly favored because the adaptogens tend to be very safe yeah and that's a great point will you describe a few of the adaptogens that people could take that are pretty accessible and yeah. because they are they're so important or describe what it is and then describe what a few of the basic ones people could take well, you can kind of guess from the name um and it's important to understand that um there's information sharing going on between all of the constituents in a plant mm -hmm. and all of the constituents in us. And um, plants are so complex, uh, they don't even know yet what all of the different chemicals are in a plant. They estimate there's a, a, at least 5,000 to actually 10,000 different natural chemicals in a tomato wow. and um, they don't know what they all are yet I and mean, this is they're we're just taking baby steps uncovering all of this so and and there's no drug that can match the complexity of what's in a plant so um in general the adaptogens they're they're not real well understood because they're very complex but they communicate with the body and with the DNA and with the cells uh, in order to right the wrongs. You know, there's somehow they know where there's something that's off. Sometimes they work through the brain. Sometimes they work through the DNA. Um, and so they kind of, they're like these little, um, uh, going back to the, taking you back to your original model, you could say. And so some of them, I really like holy basil a lot because yeah, my favorite. Um, it's not only delicious, but you can grow it yourself and make your own medicine with it. And it's very powerful and um, it functions on a physiological basis and on a mental and spiritual basis. So 
um, it, it just covers a lot of territory. And it's it's not it's not one of those you have to watch like a ginkgo or something. It's just no. it's so absolutely safe. Totally safe. Yeah. Um, now the mushrooms I really like, but I mentioned last week you have to be careful about where they're uh, where they come from because they do they're they're detoxifiers. The fungi in the forest in general, like the the um, usni and things like that. In the forest, they're like the lungs of the forest. They cleanse the air, they cleanse everything to help keep the forest clean. And um, they can do the same for us. However, if it's a super dirty forest or super dirty area, they're already, it's like the filters are full. And um, so that's, I, I, would, I would say Rishi, but because um, some people might not get a good one, I, I going to hold off on that. Um, okay, so I do think that um, in this idea of three things, specifically to help with these toxins. Or just protecting from the onslaught in our environment. I, I think all of the sulfur containing plants that are, you know, there's a whole lot of them and that gives you a lot of choice, but just think in terms of what are the sulfurs containing plants and make sure I get a lot of those. So garlic is one of them. And uh, the only thing about garlic is you don't want to eat it every day. Maybe five days a week is the most and about three cloves a day. Um, but I, I think if you take that three or four times a week, it's enough because it can throw you off if you take it all too much of, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and the other sulfur containing uh, vegetables or uh, the broccoli, the, what I mentioned before, the cruciferous, broccoli, cabbage, kale, uh, Brussels sprouts, um, and uh, onions contain a lot of sulfur too. In Ayurveda, they say don't eat onions, but um, that's, I don't, I'm not going to get into that too much, but we, we know that they're really important. So all right, so we've got holy basil and we've got the cruciferous vegetables. And um, I would say probably the third, a good clean source of sea vegetables, the kelp um, or, or watercress. Let me throw that in there too. That's another sulfur containing, but like the sea vegetables, it tends to grow, to accumulate a lot of um, really bioactive trace minerals and it has the sulfur too. So um, I would say, yeah, that would be probably in terms of mm -hmm. fending off from pollution. Those would be three real good areas to focus. You know, uh, something that's coming to mind throughout this conversation is um, I, I feel it's important that every individual have a real intuitive sense as they approach these recommendations. Like I can hear you uh, sharing Dakota and be watchful, you know, of the intake of how much garlic and what have you. And one of the things I've learned over the years, because I um, went down many paths, you know, like uh, different diets, macrobiotic, raw. Uh, I even did a 40 day fast and I readily noticed how out of sync I got with my environment and that, you know, I tested it out and there's a point at which you can purify your body to such an extent, especially when I did the 40 day fast, I really wanted to understand, you know, what happens to the body. And, uh, you know, I lost muscle tone, my skin flaked off like a snake shedding its skin. Uh, and what happened was I had uh, my hide got too thin and I wasn't able to reintegrate back into my environment. So what I've noticed, I do believe that our body is mutating and adapting. And I think whenever we go down this path, to really stay sensitive to your balance, all right? Because we can, it, it, it basically I'm saying is you can get too clean for your environment. 
Yeah, I've had that same experience when I was doing the, a, a part of the reason I stopped doing the raw foods, I was fasting a lot, doing a lot of green fasts, um, not water fasts, but I got to the point where I couldn't be on the planet anymore. My, my eyesight and my hearing, I could hear stuff from, I swear to God, birds and trees 200 miles away and just energetically not being able to, I didn't feel horrible. I just felt like untethered and hot. Mm -hmm. How do I balance that world? So I had to just toxify myself a little bit, do some grounding, had yeah. that very same experience. Um, and now I found that balance of I just seasonally go towards certain things um, because my body's done enough work and enough experimenting that I, I, when I crave something, I know it's because I need it. It's not any longer about craving bad crap and trying to break myself of something. So yeah, yeah. I've had the same experience. It's the same thing. has a question. Um, so when we're done with this loop, let me just dive her question in there. But what were you going to say, Blue? All right. Well, it's the same understanding. Like, you know, people have been in starvation for years. You don't go ahead and offer them an American Thanksgiving dinner. You know? It'll yeah, although I've ended a fast with a pizza before, and I don't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we've all experienced those devastating yeah. effects. You've been on a diet or a fast, yeah. and then all of a sudden you... You're you like, know, oh, my God. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And it's the same thing with the planetary situation. It's like, you know, uh, as we approach healing, we've got to take into consideration the level of toxic, um, the toxins in us and how well we can come off of them. Can yeah. I say something about that? Yeah. Um, uh, there's one other thing, I, first of all, an herb that I do want to mention that's used to detox heavy metals, and that's cilantro. Oh, yeah. um, and um, the dose is a fourth of a cup a day. How much? Uh, one fourth cup of cilantro a day. It, this is called poor man's chelation therapy. <laughs> and... Um, but when you're doing, and I'm not big on detox. I don't, I'm, I don't really go for it too much. But um, so there's detox and there's detox. There's detox is part of like just your natural lifestyle that's been, where you're taking care. And then there's detox. You're really going to extremes to push things out. And you have to be real careful with that because the, the toxins come mm -hmm. out in the wrong places mm -hmm. and make you sick. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do this cilantro detox, you take a, a, a calcium bentonite clay also a couple of teaspoons in water a day because that's going to help capture in the colon some of the uh, heavy metals that are coming out of your system and getting them out of your body. Can I ask you a question about bentonite? Because I've been on and off the whole clay kick for many, many years. And I, I always hear discrepancies in how, you know, because it sucks toxins out of the gut. You don't take it when you're taking anything else. Like you take your supplements separately. And then how long do you wait or do you, does it even matter? How, what's your opinion on that stuff? Well, uh, yeah, you don't take it with, uh, with your supplements. And do you take it on an empty stomach? Yeah. So and when do you when do you do yours if you're doing it? Before bed, take it before bed. Before and bed, when you get up in the morning, if you're going to do te two teaspoons a day, so uh, a good way is to put it in your water uh, uh, and let it sit overnight and drink it the next day. Um, like first thing in the morning before you've taken any supplements. Yeah, yeah. But then how long do you wait before you take your supplements? Because I do a lemon water flush with my supplements. Yeah. You know, like, I think an hour is long enough. An hour? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now, it depends, you know, if, you, if you're you taking your supplements, just drinking them and like, a, you know, that's going to move through you faster and it might hit the, the mm. clay in your colon. But if you're taking them with a meal or something, that's going to slow it down. Okay. So, but, then, okay. so, go on, go on. And then Tracy has a question. Okay. Um, maybe at a... Actually, maybe that's all I wanted to say. About that. There was something, but I forgot. Let's see what Tracy wants. To well, she was asking about, um, let's see if there's anything added to it. She was asking about uh, salt baths. Do they help detox? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm a big well, fan of that, too. Yeah, yeah. Salt is good. And on this topic of salt, some people say, I don't need to take iodine because it's in my salt. It's not. And that is not the way to do it. Because, first of all, the salt 
uh, is not clean. It's got chemicals in it. They do all kinds of things to it to yeah. get rid of everything except the sodium chloride. And um, and the iodine is it's just not a good combination. But Celtic sea salt, Himalayan sea salt, um, those are good to take. Uh, and you can put some in water and let it, um, you know, just, yeah, you drink salt water. That's yeah, you can do a salt flush or do like a salt uh, soak on your feet. And then again, I'm going to recommend the company that I use, which is the Premier Research Labs. It's a quantum company that it doesn't make. They have some of the best salt okay. um, baths and, and things. They, uh, they have one that's in a compound with bentonite clay that you actually can put in your mouth mm -hmm. um, to take out the mercury. And then they, it, it's awesome because you put this packed in there and you do it for like what 20 minutes or whatever and then then you wash it out and then they say soak your feet in salt while you sit in the sun because it neutralizes that the products are awesome but they do have some really really amazing they're the best salts that i've ever seen and i do like a soak with them yeah. all right now they're rebecca you have brought up a lot of references when you do the summary after this show yeah i'll put it in well i brought up references brought up and places to purchase items okay yeah i brought up three references and then if you will forward me the ones that you guys said, because there was a couple that you said in terms of uh, where to get resources, um, give those to me and I'll yeah, take care of them. Okay. The iodine, right. the iodine, good, good. Yeah. Um, okay, did you answer, you answered uh, Trace's question, right? Okay, all right, I want to swing us around for a moment, which I do, and go back to how we open this hilarious show. Okay. Can I close mine off? No, no, because you oh. unless you're leaving oh. our show. Okay. Yeah. Then we lose you. Unless you just want to do audio. You know. Yeah, because I have to get up for a second. Okay. So how do I turn this off? Uh, you just uh, leave meeting. Okay. Or you can shut video off. And I, I have to go let the dog out, so... Oh great! Um, so you can. Talk I'll do that. I'll get that. Talk amongst she... myself. Oh my favorite. Yeah, I'll do that thing. after she gets back. <laughs> and I do have to. I'm gonna exit my screen for a moment, and it's because I gotta go let the dog out. All right. Okay. I'll do my thing, and then I'm gonna take a break too, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So the way we open this hilarious show, right? I wanna. I wanna kind of. Uh, talk about the relationship to everything that we've been sharing now, right? We've been, we came back into this reality. We came back to the planet because we are in these bioorganisms and, uh, and these bioorganisms are going through many changes and sometimes not so comfortably. So we've talked about the botanicals, the herbs, the, the ingredients that can assist us in, um, having a more pleasant or more comfortable experience in this organism. Now, what I shared earlier about returning to our origins, returning to source, and that perhaps, uh, perhaps the entertaining and pondering and contemplation of conscious death in every moment is a very valuable thing for us. Um, where this applies, is when I get myself, here I am, in a human experience, getting a lot of information, okay? Now, if I find in any given moment, I'm starting to get overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, this is too much information, or I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to be on this schedule. Am I going to remember? I do two teaspoons of salt, and how much garlic was that, and da 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 da, -da. Okay. Our relationship to this is what brings us back to our relationship to the external environment, all right? If we're going to begin to worry or have any anxiety about, oh my gosh, you know, I'm getting poisoned, da, 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 da. That's the shit you want to let go of, all right? Now, what my experience has been is, yes, I have a bioorganism, and as long as I'm here, I want it to be as comfortable as possible, all right? So while I'm sitting and contemplating conscious death, and I listen to my body, and I go, well, you know what? I'd like to have a little better fluidity in my bones, all right? 
it's a process. I'm not just jumping unless of course, and I'm not condoning taking our own lives. It's like, we wanna make the best of this situation before we consciously exit. And so again, you have to go in here, all right? It's all those moments of what are you letting fall away? And if you need a transition of having more comfort in your being, then by all means, uh, consider the botanicals and the healing herbs that are still present in this environment. Consider that in your transitional self. So I hope you, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. It's like we don't abandon anything other than as you're seeking truth and going deeper into who you are, you may find there's moments like when we talked about, all right, let's say we get to that breatharian telepathic self. You may find there are moments that all of a sudden through your own source self, an antidote is revived in your own immune system. You may have an awareness in your deeper reflection in self that all of a sudden you may have um, corrected an iodine balance. You understand what I'm saying? That eventually, ultimately, if we even consider breatharianism, that there is the potential to find that balance within this bioorganism. In the meantime, if we need to ingest, all right, it's us becoming very familiar in this bioorganism, how the ingestion of that mushroom, how the ingestion of that particular food is rearranging our molecular system so that we are in a more comfortable suit. So there is a crossover there, okay? Now, if you can't have access to any of this, then fine. Just be where you are. Okay. I was listening to everything you were oh. saying. Um, okay. I was here. I was just... Uh, yeah, I understand where I was, what I'm trying to... We don't, we don't throw anything out. We're all of what we are. Um, Becca, take it away, girlfriend. I'm going to take a run, a rest run. We're done in 20 minutes. I'll sit over there. So sit, what? Sit, I'll sit over here. So, um, yeah, I just, I love all the information that we're gaining from this. It's so accessible. You know, it, you know, I talked about being overwhelmed with all that we have to do to stay just in this vessel and not kill ourselves. But the thing that I love so much about Dakota and your work is that you make it so accessible to us. It's like, oh, just eat a handful of cilantro on something. Put it in your salad, you know. Mm. That, that we've lost our relationship to the plant world. Mm -hmm. And to get that back is really important, you know just through not necessarily changing where we live even so much. It's just mm -hmm. incorporating, being more discerning, being much pickier, growing a few things yourself. It could start that simple. Mm -hmm. And then doing the things you need to do, like incorporating cilantro into your diet. Or it doesn't have to be, because I overcomplicate everything. When I do something, I'm like whole hog on it, you know, well, everything. So, But it can start simple and make a vast difference. The ones who are the masters at overcomplicating things are the plants. They're the master chemists. Our science is like, you know, two days old compared to what the plants are doing. And uh, we, unfortunately, we've had this idea that, um, the, that plant medicine is weak that we need strong drugs, the heroic medicine to make, to have an effect. But once we begin to understand how powerful and complex these plants are and that our bodies have evolved with them and they, in fact, um, one of my realizations is that we were created by plants. 
when you go into get into evolutionary biology and you look at uh, how plants are in, were involved in the actual formation of early uh, organisms and you see how they created them because they needed pollinators and they needed um, a, a wide variety of uh, interactions that they couldn't achieve because they weren't mobile. And then eventually they needed gardeners. And, um, and it's a long story, but it makes a lot of sense when you really go back into it. So the, there's a, a niche for plants that is right between us and the quantum realm because they understand they work on, through energetics and frequency and they're right on that edge where the information uh, from other dimensions and, and energy fields is moving through them in a way that they understand that enables them to create in a way that's very, very powerful. So our interactions with them is really strong medicine. Mm -hmm. So we've got about uh, 12 minutes left or so, and I would, I'd love story time. I want story time. Maybe we have, we have more time than that. Go ahead. Well, it's 20 till, and we like to start wrapping it up about seven minutes. So oh, yeah, that's right. Up. Unless we want to put Biggie on the edge. <laughs> so, um, Dakota, do you have a story, one of your amazing stories that might relate to our topic today about your time in the woods? Uh, yes, I do. Let me just pick one. Um, She's, you're off screen, by the way. She, she turned her thing off. You want to trade places? Yeah. I'll stand by the okay. door. Story bit. time with Snow White Dakota. <laughs> Snow White Dakota. Yeah, that's right. Biggie likes the stories. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess kind of in keeping with uh, what we're talking about, the power of plants. I don't think I told this one yet. Did I tell you about the time when I fell down the mountain and had internal injuries? Um, you haven't told me anything. I've heard like two stories because we just oh. were on air that one time. So any story you tell will be awesome. All right. So um, as you know, where I was living, there weren't any people in the middle of the wilderness and all that. There was an old, old decayed logging road that in the summertime, uh, if you had a real good vehicle, you could get in on that old logging road when when it was dry and um, so every once in a while people would show up that way well I had uh, taken a, a hike out to over the top of the mountain and I was fetching some supplies from my cache uh, up at the top of the mountain and had a big backpack on that was real heavy with a cinch strap and as I was coming back down the mountain I slipped on a pebble and fell down the mountain in that uh, uh, backpack, the cinch strap, came up underneath my rib cage and tore up my gallbladder and liver and stuff like that. And um, so I was about halfway down the mountain and uh, I took the, the backpack off and I could hear all kinds of terrible noises going on of things gurgling in the wrong places. And um, went into shock and but I had to get back I had to get all the way down the mountain and um, as I started to go down the mountain I knew that there had been some people that had driven in on that road that day and I thought isn't this amazing there are actually people down there when I have internal injuries and I could get and they could get me to the hospital and that was my first thought. And then as I continued walking down the mountain, holding my guts in, I started thinking, but wait a minute. I've got, they don't have all the plants in the hospital. I've got all the plants here. So if I go to the hospital, you know, it, I started weighing the pros and cons of staying or leaving. Those people I knew were going to leave the next morning. And then I would be alone again without any way to no way to make a phone call or get any help. So um, by the time I got down to the bottom of the mountain, I had made my choice. And this was one of those really excellent opportunities to find out what I truly, truly believe. You know, we talk a lot about things, but when you're put into a life and death situation, you really find out what it is that you actually believe or know. 
And um, I decided that my odds were in my favor if I stayed and used the plants. And so I didn't tell those folks that I was injured. I just wrapped myself up and went to bed and started using herbs right away. And um, I couldn't, of course, I couldn't tell what the extent of the injuries were. Um, I knew something was leaking, <laughs> that's all. And I figured it was my gallbladder, maybe my liver, but probably my gallbladder. So I started taking cayenne and um, uh, uh, putting burdock and comfrey poultices on me and taking agrimony and shepherd's purse and all of these things to stop the um, whatever was happening in there. So the next morning, those people left and um, I continued to use all of the herbs and obviously I survived that one. Um, <laughs> and all the others. <laughs> yeah, I survived it and uh, I, I, was, I was really happy that I had had the opportunity to test that out, you know, because that's a strong one. Usually we think, ah, herbs can't do that. You have internal injuries, man. And I'm not advising people, obviously, to, to ignore that or not go to the emergency room or anything like that. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you cannot go, um, know that it is your body is amazing and that it can heal things. Um, it knows what to do. And uh, the herbs were a great assist. They helped um, astringe and close up and heal tissues. Um, it took me about a month and uh, I, I do have some adhesions left over from it, but that's, that's it. That's, I'm alive. So that's my story for today. And you obviously had some of this stuff on hand. Oh, I had everything. I, right. So you didn't have to go forage. It, you had it with you in your cabin or your tent or? No, I grew it all around me. Right. So you, it was right there. Yeah, I, I, and I had my emergency medicine patch close to the cabin for in case I was injured and couldn't really get around. So mm. I had my most important things growing right there. And I had processed some things. I did have some dried right. herbs, but um, I, I made a point of making sure that I had an herb for every occasion. <laughs> you and Mar Martha Stewart, just different. <laughs> Like the oh, Martha Stewart, <laughs> an herb for every occasion. <laughs> I'm going to give you back to okay. your woman. Okay. Thanks for story time. We love story time. Oh, you're for a moment. <laughs> so take all that information. <laughs> know that we love you. Come on back and join me. I'm, I'm, I'm good just being still today. I'm good. I'm just enjoying being still. Oh, can I say something? I just yeah. want to say hi to Tracy because Tracy enrolled in the school. Yeah. And yeah, she just recently enrolled and um, it's just getting started. So I want to say hi, Tracy. Yeah. And I'm going to check the chat room after we close the show. I, I get too distracted. But I love you kids that have been in the chat room. Thank you. And again, whoever's out there listening, you're always welcome to connect with us. Uh, and of course, big, big thank you to Conscious Consumer Network, that TV. That's the platform that's allowing us to bring you some really authentic news and updates and beingness. Mel V and Biggie, they have, they put their heart and soul into this. And that's why we come to you with our heart and soul as well. Mm -hmm. We have a great tribe uh, bringing incredible information and knowledge to you from this platform. So, but you got to have courage to go down the rabbit hole. It takes a lot of courage to really understand how we all got to where we are. And it's going to take a lot of courage to go back home again. And so I love you. Send lots of love and deepening compassion for all of humanity and all that exists. 
Tracy says big love to everybody and Biggie and CCN. She's signing off. Thank you, Tracy, for being with us today. Yes. Dakota, we love having you on the show, and I think we should incorporate story time every week that you're on the show with us. Okay, that's a good idea. And yeah. also, to let people know, we plan to do a show on Thanksgiving. Uh, which in America is two Thursdays from now. Not next yeah, Thursday, I guess but the we have Thursday. to check with Biggie. Biggie, are you going to be... Um, Oh, we got five minutes. Yes. Okay. So Biggie and Mel V will be there. Thank you. We'll be here for Thanksgiving as well. Thanksgiving right. is a totally American holiday. So we're going to sign off. Thank you to everybody. A reminder to go to Ethy Market, which is ethical market, ethymarket.com, and donate to the cause of CCN staying afloat. Or otherwise, we're going to have to get some bastard advertisers in here, which are going to annoy the fuck out of you. So go donate a little money to us. Um, it'll keep the um, public network that we have going autonomous, free, and ready for you. Right Thank on. you, everybody, for joining us today. We will see you again next Thursday. Love to all. Blessings to all. Thank you. To